both as a melee weapon and a way to directly hack into your enemy and therefore the network at longer range. Hey guys, Dantix here, back with another Cyberpunk 2077 video. Today I thought I would painfully scrub through all the gameplay we've had up to this date and compile and list all the firearms, weapons and cyberware together so you don't have to. You'll actually be surprised what you didn't notice and what you missed. I know I was. First I'll run through the rarity and firearm types, and then talk about pistols, sniper rifles, shotguns, rifles, melee weapons and finally cyberware. So buckle up because this one is juicy. So V, are you willing? Yeah, I'm in. V's in, so why aren't you? Subscribe for the latest Cyberpunk 2077 and RPG content. Also, don't forget you can win yourself a PC copy of Cyberpunk like three other members so far by following the link below. Okay, I want to explain rarity and weapon types before I showcase them, just so you have an idea of what you're seeing. All weapons and cyberware have a rarity, from lowest to highest is ordinary, unusual, rare, epic, legendary and iconic. Legendary and iconic generally have the best stats and mod slots, but iconic items typically have a flavor to them that changes how you play. Think Diablo legendary items. Then we have the different types of firearms, power, tech and smart. Power weapons are your standard firearms, however, with special implants which I'll go through, you can bounce bullets off walls. Tech are modified firearms that can be charged for increased damage and they can pierce through cover and walls. Smart weapons fire self-propelled projectiles that track and follow targets. However, you need a smart link implant to unlock the full potential of their targeting systems. There are also Borg weapons which require special cyberware to wield as they're designed to be fired by basically androids so a normal human would blow their arms off with the recoil. Also keep in mind that recoil, reload time, accuracy and animations change the more skill you have with a weapon, so what you see now might not be representative of how they'll function with your character. As you invest in skills, you'll also unlock perks that further improve your proficiency with weapons. Let's start with the old small and reliable handgun because it's not about the size, it's about how you use it. In this case, it seems pistols are easy to come by and mostly accurate. In the 48 minute gameplay demo, the Federated Arms Vindicator was the first weapon we got to see in action. It's a rare automatic power pistol. It holds 21 rounds in the magazine and seems to dispatch enemies at close to mid range with ease, even able to be fired out of moving vehicles effectively. One such feature of the pistols. Like mentioned, it's a power type weapon, so with the right implant, you can use the ricochet targeting system. Fun fact, Royce here is packing an iconic quality pistol, so maybe find a way to convince him to part with it. If you want something more traditional, we have a revolver of unknown make and origin. Things done. So let's wreak some havoc. It seems highly accurate with high damage, seems to be able to fire as fast as you can pull the trigger and control it, and I suspect at higher skill levels you'll be spinning the gun around with little flourishes like this. Corpse got their grubby claws and everything. It's our choice if we want to finish her off or spare her. Your cyberpunk, your rules. And then we have another revolver of unknown make and origin. This one though seems to fire shot based rounds, so a handheld shotgun pistol of sorts which explains the recoil. In the lore there's a manufacturer that makes a name for themselves with this kind of pistol, but we can't be sure this is the same brand so I won't speculate. It has 6 rounds in the chamber and like all revolvers, fires as fast as you can control the weapon. In the last clip you can see the weapon modified with a sight. Happy now Jackie! Or males. Next we have an unknown pistol. In the first clip it's firing typical rounds, in the second though it's firing with a blue flare, suggesting a modification to the weapon. Besides the change in colour that is. It doesn't seem to do high damage though as the Valentino member is running through the rounds even though it seems to be damaging him quite visually. 
The last pistols I want to cover are Jackies. <laughs> Look at these custom gold plated pistols. I wonder if you can get your own custom set or even earn these off Jackie. Hopefully not off his corpse. So now we're going from small and handheld pistols to big and powerful sniper rifles. First is the Tsunami Nikomata. It's a tech sniper rifle that, like all tech weapons, can be charged and pierced through concrete like cardboard. Yes, there are tech snipers, but what about smart snipers? Here you go. This one is of unknown origins, but I suspect it's the Rostovic brand. I just said I wouldn't speculate, but I just did. <sighs> anyway, like all smart weapons, the projectile fired will home in on its target. So snipers are for staying far away from your enemies, but what if you want to get up close and personal? Well, for that you'll need a trusty shotgun. The first up is the Blunderbuss by Budget Arms, first seen in the 48 minute demo. However, since then its name may have changed to DB2 Satara, or they could just be two different tech shotguns that just so happen to look and function exactly the same. As you can see, up close, shotguns will literally blow your enemies away, their limbs as well. In this clip, if we slow it down, you can see the blunderbuss shots piercing through the cover and taking out the Maelstrom Gangoon behind it, which seems incredibly effective. Another targeting system that will reveal enemies behind walls. Paired with the penetrating rounds of our tech shot, it's a deadly combination. Shields down. Let's finish him off. Okay, let's put him down and get this job over. Next is the Budget Arms Carnage Pump Action Shotgun. Budget Arms are your, for the people, cheap weapons. You can pick one up on the way home from work. But cheap doesn't always mean bad. In the case of the Carnage, it's cut from one solid piece of metal, making it heavy and powerful enough to cut a man clean in half. You'll notice even the pumping animation seems quite solid and stiff like it's a big piece of metal. Like the weapon requires strength to unload the massive round. Then we have the M179 Achilles by Militar. I'm getting distracted because I realized what I just said before. Okay, focus. The M179 Achilles by Militech. I made it so far through this without getting into double entendre territory. Oh, God. All right, it's a tech shotgun, and we don't have much more info on it than this short clip. That's all I got to say. Here's an unknown power shotgun. Seems like a standard powerful pump action. Then we have what looks like the blunderbuss without the tech modifications, a double barrel power shotgun. Then we have the Crusher. Interesting name for a gun, but when you take into account this magazine loaded shotgun hits hard, it makes sense. It's a power weapon and doesn't need to be reloaded after every shot. You can see Annihilation XP go up in the middle left when fired, which confirms it's a shotgun. Seems you will have quite a variety of shotguns. Speaking of which, we have seen both power and tech shotguns, but what about smart? Introducing the L69 Zuo, which is an 8 barreled smart shotgun that can track 8 targets independently according to the developers. I'm not sure exactly how it does this, but the option is there for those who have 8 people in their personal space. Nice. Finally, we have the DU-4, another smart shotgun. Like all smart weapons, the projectiles are fired as rockets that independently home in on targets. If we slow it down, we can see what's happening here. In the case of a shotgun, you have to wonder, since all the shots will reach their target, is the uber damage we are only used to achieving up close with a shotgun now able to be achieved at longer ranges? It's something to consider. 
consider that while we move over to weapons that fall under the rifle category, which after an update does include snipers, but it's my video and I chose to separate them anyway. <laughs> this category includes assault rifles and SMGs as well, which we'll be going through now. The first is the Type 41 by Kang Tao. It's an epic quality smart rifle that performs how you would expect. The footage you're seeing is from the 48 minute demo and is quite old and since then the animations have been improved. The toughest bastards guarding this route. Probably some reason for that. should bring the shield down. Then we have the TKI-20 Shingen, another smart submachine gun. Sadly, we don't have much footage beyond this short firing sequence. If you want to see more smart SMG action, check out this unknown model, showing just what an automatic rate of fire can do. And then we have the Militech M31A1 rifle. During the demo, it didn't really get time to shine as the player equips it and swaps it out as the enemy he's facing is shielded. I expect an updated version to have a better weight Our to it. Are not dealing a lot of damage because he's packing an autonomous shield. Then we have the Genesis 1924 by an unknown source. We see it in a lot of footage which suggests that either the developers like the rifle or that it's common. Fun fact, Genesis 1924 is a Bible verse which says, Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Not sure how accurate this is for this particular weapon, but it seems effective enough. It's a power weapon that holds 30 rounds and is fully automatic. B. I'm gonna introduce. Kyle points to the valley. That's uh, right. Family or the outside world? We'll go to hell and back. There's not where you start. With Gorilla Arms cyberware installed, you can rip turrets out of their holsters and fire them against their masters. This counts as a rifle and builds that skill. Turrets seem extremely powerful. Then we have the HJSH-18 Masamune, an automatic power rifle. It holds a hundred rounds in the magazine and unloads at a high rate of fire. You can very visually see the barrels overheating when fired for a while. I'm not sure if this is simply cosmetic or has some kind of gameplay implications, but here is your high rate of fire option. Then we have an unknown rifle spraying bullets in a bar. And here are a few rifles of unknown source and not much content. Those are all the firearms I have to show you today. With the firearms shown, we still have melee weapons and cyberware to go. Let's start with the Thermal Katana. This one is made by Arasaka and is a nanofilament heated blade. It seems to cut through Bozo gang members with ease. I kind of like this clip because it shows a gang member dropping a cardboard box of ammo. So we have a reflex based melee, but what about the body attribute? We have the Sledgehammer. This one is wielded by Sasquatch, the leader of the animals in Pacifica. It just so happens that her sledgehammer is of iconic quality, just like Royce's pistol. It deliberately doesn't show you the stats, but maybe there's some way to convince her to part with this weapon. Then we have the Arasaka Katanas. As your skill grows, your animations will change. In this case, it seems like you can block and strike with light and heavy attacks. We know with perks you'll be able to apply bleed effects. These katanas are highly customizable color-wise. Both the blade and the handle can be independently colored. Even pink is an option. 
We know that other melee weapons we'll have access to include the electric alpha batons, spiked bats, tantos, and of course, we have the trusty knife. <laughs> Not much to be said here. Not sure how effective blocking with this thing will be, but hey, wouldn't be hard to hide one of these and, well, throw them at your enemies too. Speaking of throwing, let's talk throwing weapons. First is the knife. Oh, look, we're back here with knives again. They're just that useful. Then we have the trusty grenade. I already went through some of the perks you could have with grenades in another video, but know you can increase their effectiveness with perks in the tech tree. They seem to do high splash damage in a large area, but enemies will try to get away from the blast zone. With a perk, you'll be able to see this zone before you throw the grenade. Which brings us to the most cyberpunk things of all, cyberware. You have slots on your person to which you can install cyberware. There is only one slot for both your arms, so you can't mix and match cyberware. If you want the gorilla arms, you're going to need to have both. Let's start with the flagship cyberpunk modification, the Mantis Blades. These are hidden blades that extend from your arms to slice and dice your enemies. In early footage, we saw the player use these to run on and stick to the wall. That's no longer in the game. However, they're still very powerful. We see in the footage that the blades can make quick work of anyone, staggering targets it hits and not letting them attack back. We know that you can further modify or upgrade the blades to have an electric effect and perhaps more. Next is the mono wire. We don't know a whole lot about this cyberware except that it can be used both as a melee weapon and a way to directly hack into your enemy and therefore the network at longer range. This will probably be many netrunners go to cyber implants as although you can quick hack without a connection, to directly hack you'll need to get up close normally. With the mono wire you can do so safely and have a backup if a fight is inevitable. Then we have the Gorilla Arms modification, which improves both strength and endurance. It lets you hit harder in melee, which is obvious, but it also lets you do things like pry open doors, rip turrets out of their sockets like mentioned, and take people as human shields. Finally, for the arm mods, we have the projectile launch system, which lets you outfit yourself with various projectiles fired from your arms. It's a missile launcher in the palm of your hands, more or less literally. In this case, we see it using an RPG. I foresee this being a cooldown based ability. Moving over to the eye implants, we know of two, the Kuroshi Optical Scanner Mark 1 and Mark 2. The Mark 1 is the only required cyberware that we know of in the game. It provides you with a heads up display in game and also lets you zoom in and conduct basic scans on targets. Without it, you wouldn't be able to see your objectives. The Mark II, however, lets you discover structural weak points on machines and vehicles and highlights your targets in red on your screen. We see that in action during the Royce boss fight. Shields down. Let's finish him up. Next is an arm mod you get fairly early on. It lets you use weapons you otherwise wouldn't be able to with a 50% damage reduction. It also increases melee damage and it's said to increase damage a weapons it's in contact with. And shows us weapon information like ammo count and fire buttons. Finally, a bonus bit of cyberware, cyber modifications to the legs, which gives people the ability to effortlessly jump. Our man Jackie has them as shown here. So thanks for watching guys, what weapons and cyberware will you be looking to pack come November 18th? Does something stand out to you? Let me know below. A like would be super appreciated if you liked the video and if you aren't already, a sub as well. If you want to talk to me and other like-minded individuals about cyberpunk and other games, join my discord. I'll be covering everything cyberpunk and you really don't want to miss what I have planned. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again very soon.